On this episode of Low Buck Garage, I hook up some batteries. I hook up an electric Ooh. motor. <laughs> Maybe I should uh, mount it to something. I hook up a bicycle chain. I actually shear the link completely apart. And then this happens. A while back you saw me working an amphibious vehicle for my dad so he could get in and out of a boat while it was still on dry land. It's been a couple years now. This is his main mode of transportation when outside. And he just got a flat tire. So we gotta fix that first. They actually make cover around tires made out of foam that'll never go flat. But they're really expensive. And they're this well, I would call it a street tread pattern. Let's call it a hallway tread pattern. Uh, it's meant for driving around indoors and not marking up floors. But my dad only uses this thing outside, so he needed a little bit more aggressive tread. This thing is a 410, 350, 4 size tire. They're real common on all sorts of stuff. Like hand carts. I found these. They're a flat free solid tire with a knobby tread in the same size. They were cheap, like 15 bucks a pop. They're only about two bucks more than the tube for this tire. It says not for highway use. Hope that's not an issue. Wonder if that's the same bolt pattern. Huh. Well, that was a lot easier than I expected. Now, I was actually trying to sneak this in while my dad was at the dentist and get it done before he got back. But now I'm done early. So, uh, let's take this thing for a spin and see what it can do. We gotta turn it all the way up. Noticed one immediate problem. The tires have traction, but the rims spin inside them. Let's see if it works now. There we go. Got my GPS, so I can record our top speed here. Technically it does donuts, but they're not very satisfying. Max speed was five miles an hour. I consider that unacceptably slow. We need to do something better for him. And this is going to become that something better. Uh, this is a three-wheeled bicycle. But this has a chassis that's really meant for speed compared to a hover round. Uh, we've got bigger tires. We've got a longer wheelbase. I think we can probably get this thing to like 10 miles an hour. Now this thing has been sitting around for a long time. Let's see what we have to work with here. We have a front wheel. The sidewalls have a little bit of um, deterioration. Uh, we have a caliper style brake that grabs the rim. It also appears to have some kind of drum brake that isn't hooked up. Now we have pedal power driving a chain. Now we're going to an axle in the back here. And the pedals drive some kind of one-way clutch. The rear tire appears to have a bead that's split wide open. One thing this does have is an upgrade to foam tubes. Uh, so that way these can't actually go flat. The front, however, can go flat. So let's air that up and see what we got. Now we gotta test it out. The one way clutch needs a little work.
This is terrible. It's incredibly difficult to pedal. It's way too low. My feet hit the ground. It's too cramped. It's not good. And in that amount of time, the front tire is already almost out of air. I hate spending money I don't need to, but I think new tires might be warranted here. Picked up this. Three brand new tires and one tube. But I'm not planning on having my dad actually have to pedal this thing. So I also bought this. The absolute cheapest electric bike conversion kit I could find. And here we have lights, bolts, hand grips with looks like a throttle control, bracketry, a gear reduction motor, brake levers, a tiny little speed controller, one-way clutch, keys, chain, connectors, and a bunch of broken foam. Now I didn't get any instructions at all with this, but it doesn't really matter because I doubt they would have been for a three-wheeled bike. So let's figure out how we can electrify this thing. Looks like this speed control unit controls pretty much everything. There's a bunch of connectors, a lot of the same. They're not labeled. Uh, there's colors, but I have no idea what those mean. I did want find one connector that had three wires, and then three wires came out of the throttle control. So I know that plugs in there. Uh, the motor doesn't have a connector on it to set the polarity. They're the same terminal. Looks like it fits this blue and white connector. So I'm guessing this other thick one is the battery. On these brake controls, I've got red and yellow. There's nothing here that's red and yellow. I've got one that's black and yellow. And then I've got a bunch of loose connectors and terminals where I'm supposed to make my own connections. It's gonna take me a little bit to figure all this stuff out. And then things got a little more interesting. After I bought this kit and started this project, I got contacted by an electric bike manufacturer, AdMotor. They asked me if I wanted to try out one of their electric bikes. So I took a look at their website and found this. And that's almost exactly what I'm intending to build here. And they actually agreed to send me one of those so I can compare it to what I'm building here. So uh, while I figure this out, let me show you that. The box just arrived from Ad Motor. It's a little bigger than I expected. Now it's time to tackle unboxing. Looks heavier than it is. Both taped and stapled. This is what we got. Definitely well packaged. It always bothers me when stores try to sell you a bike that's pre-assembled. You don't get the fun of putting it together. I get to put this together. At least a little bit. Nice thick zip ties to hold it all together. It's got all sorts of reinforcements in the box here. There's big thick corrugated cardboard. Here we have the front wheel with a motor in it. That's the fun stuff. This is one seriously big tire. That's a 27 inch tall tire. That's about the same size as a stock flat fender Jeep tire. Uh, a little narrower, but not by much. This is almost the same thing. Now, one thing I haven't run into yet is any pesky assembly instructions. We're just gonna sort of make it up as we go along because that's the way I do things here. I'm gonna put these handlebars while it's still in the box. I'm expecting this is one of those things you're supposed to have two people to take out of the box. I don't, it's me here. That's it. It's got a little dashboard. That's pretty sweet. I got a rack here with a uh, zipper up case. It's got like a little trunk. Oh, that's awesome. There's more parts in here. That's even better. It means I get to assemble more stuff. So it looks like a front fender, miscellaneous stuff, more miscellaneous stuff, and another little rack. This looks like one from the, uh, for the front. Let's see what this battery looks like. Nicely padded. We got a battery. That's a pretty hefty piece. 48 volt DC, 19.6 amp hour, 940.8 watt hour. So there's a pretty good chunk of energy right there. It's got keys apparently. When I opened up those extra boxes I found in the back. I did find a manual and I know absolutely nothing about electric bikes. So I'm actually gonna look at this cause I don't know what I'm doing. And there's tools. They even have wrenches. And this looks like a battery charger to me. We got a red indicator light indicating it's charging. So the battery should be good in uh, a lot of hours. And in the meantime, I can put together other stuff. Here we have the seat. Looks really comfy with a backrest and everything, adjustable. So this has even more storage than that big rear trunk. You can pile stuff on front. Looks like a horn, headlight, their tool kit. Now this is the good stuff. This is the front wheel. So there's no extra chain or gears or anything like that. We just have a motor integrated right into the hub with a direct drive and a really nice disc brake. That's better than some of my motorcycles have. Now, I don't want to mislead you into thinking this is really heavy. Uh, I have the hoist here mainly because I'm by myself. Two people could probably lift it right out of the box. It's 
So with all the pre-assembled parts on here for lifting out of the box, just a tad over 70 pounds. So that should be no problem with two people. But since I got a hang here, it's a good time to add the front tire because it's off the ground. And our supplied wrench fits nicely. That's a nice little piece of threaded rod. I'm gonna save that for later. Keyed washer on the outside here to close up the circle. These also have flat spots on the washers. The flats fit nicely in the forks. This axle is gonna actually have a lot of torque on it. This is a 750 watt motor, which is somewhere around one horsepower. That's a pretty good amount of power. It's all driven off these two flat spots. So you definitely need to make sure those are secure. Mike, you even gonna follow the torque specs. There we go. Now I'm not a big fan of reading the manual on stuff, but you definitely want to on this one. Cause it brings up some stuff that I never would have thought of. Now these pedals are pre-attached from the factory and um, they said they are installed, but make sure they're tight. Went and grabbed it. These things are finger tight. Now because they were installed, I never would have thought to look to see if they were loose, unless I had read that in the manual. There we go. Now these are tight. Now this is definitely a large bike. Should be fun to try out. But it looks like there's a tilt adjustment on the seat, so we're gonna try that out now. There's a screw you loosen up. Okay. Oh yeah, that's better. Can recline now. Now I need to install the basket and fenders. One thing I like is that the hardware is actually pre-installed. So it's not like you get a bag of screws and have to mix and match which ones they are. You know, this bolt goes in this hole. So the assembly part's done. Now we can put in a battery and see what happens when we turn it on. There we go. Apparently those keys are just for removing the battery. Uh, so in order to take this battery off the frame, you need a key to unlock it. I guess batteries probably are stolen just like everything else. Let's hit the on button and see what happens. There we go. So let's see what we got in the dashboard. Battery gauge, say showing full. Odometer, zero miles. Speed, zero miles an hour. Mode, eco. Then we have watts. I'm guessing this is about a power you're using. And then one, that's, uh, that's your power assist setting so you can change how much assist you're getting. That's headlights right there. We have a mechanical bell. That's electric horn. Uh, the bell's better. Then we have arrows. All right, blinking on. We got the blinking going. So I'm gonna go hit the brakes. Now I wanna be able to try this bike out, but the manual in many places said, do not drive it in the rain. And we have that strange water stuff coming out of the sky here. It's not too common, but I can't drive it today. I wonder what happens if you get caught in a rainstorm. Let's see what we can do here. We're pedaling. Whoa, look how it's driving on me. As soon as I started pedaling, it took off. Yep, there we're going. All right, ooh. This has a twist throttle like a motorcycle. So let's try that. You can feel the torque steer. Yeah, oh, that, oh. On two wheels, definitely way too fast for indoor use. Now that I got a benchmark to compare to, I gotta do some serious upgrading here. I found a wiring diagram online. I've got my 24 volt source. I'm going to the speed controller here. I've got the throttle hooked up. I've got a brake hooked up. I've got the key switch hooked up and got the motor hooked up. So we're gonna see if that actually goes somewhere. Gonna turn the key switch on. Give us some throttle. Oh yeah, that does something. <laughs> Maybe I should uh, mount it to something. Then I'm gonna try out my brake. Hit the brakes, and it shuts off the power. Whoa, uh, yeah. Definitely should mount that to something. I did get the ax out. And the bearings. Some of them, uh, Took a little bit of slicing to take off. These bearings were shot in the first place. It got even worse when I sliced them open. So, I got a new set of bearings. These are under two bucks a piece when I bought a 10 pack. And I need eight, so I'm in pretty good shape there. I just need to clean up the axle, get all this old lumpy rust off, get it down to bare metal like I did to take it out. Some of this is really pitted. This may take a little while to clean up. Ready to start putting it back together. And I've got the one-way sprocket that came with the electric motor kit. I also have some kind of adapter that they sent. 
Now I have no idea what this goes to. It's kind of hollow and not very useful looking, uh, but I need to go to a 5 8 shaft. So I need to somehow make something inside this that'll drive off a keyway. So I went digging in my scrap bin. I found this. I have no idea what this is or where it came from. What it appears to be is a piece of tubing with a sprocket welded to the end, a bushing slid over that sprocket, and that has a 5 8 hole in a keyway. So that's good. This end has a bunch of sharp prongs and nuts welded to it. I have absolutely no idea what this did. I didn't actually make this, I got it in a pile of stuff, and of course I hoarded it. I think I only really need the sprocket part, so we'll just slice that off. If you have any idea what this was used for, let me know, because I have no clue. It looks kind of dangerous. Wouldn't want that spinning at speed. Now, let's have to make these two go together. I want to turn down the sprocket to fit the adapter, but I want to leave the actual sprocket part on. That way I have a shoulder for this to go up against. There's not much to grab on. When digging my pile, found a piece of old bar stock, and luckily it even has a hole in it. So I'm gonna drive the set screw into the hole slightly, and now I can grab this shaft and turn whatever I want over there. Got the diameter good, so I'm happy with that. A uh, Couple things I noticed, there's a big radius in, inside of this here, so I'm gonna put a chamfer on here to let it slide in a little further. Also, the set screws. When I put this on, it's gonna cover them up. So I gotta make sure to make a relief in this before I weld it on so I can actually get to the set screw. Looks like this metal had been hardened, so I couldn't drill it. I just made a slot with a cutoff wheel. I have my set screw sticking out a little bit, so I know it's gonna fit out. And there we go, we got an adapter that looks like it'll work. I'm gonna weld it just a little bit inside there to make sure it holds together, but I think we're in pretty good shape here. Got the new bearings in, axle shaft is in, got the original sprocket back on for the pedals. Got my adapter with the new sprocket on, sort of mocking it up here. Now this motor came with a bracket. Looks like it was meant to mount this way with the flanges pointing outwards. But I wanna mount it this way and try to catch these tubes on the bike. These hit the motor casing. We're just gonna make a little clearance there, somewhere in that vicinity. Gotta change these tires out. You can just, you know, open them up to look inside. But they're still being a pain to come off the rim because it has that foam tube in it. It's amazing that the bead completely rusted through and torn off, the still is not easy to remove. Well, that's steel. It's a little pokey. It was at least a decade ago I put these in. Apparently they've all stuck together at this point. There we go. All right, got a rim free. On to my last tire here. I'm doing this out in the sun to try to get this thing a little bit warmer and more flexible, but it's still a pain. All right, push this bead down, seat it in place. We're good. I think I may have put the tire on backwards, but I don't think that really matters. Yeah, it's working. I've been soaking this chain and chain lube for a week or so. This one-way sprocket still isn't quite right. I tried to take it apart and clean it, but um, that didn't go well. I ended up ordering a new one. There we go. We're back in business as a bicycle. Definitely rolls way easier than it did before. I got the sprockets in. I got the motor mocked up into place with some secure fasteners. And uh, I think I'm ready to actually power this thing up. Now I need to hook up all the electronic controls. Now this kit came with two brake levers. I only have one brake on this bike, so I only need one. I'm gonna put them both on. I might add more brakes later, because the one rib brake seems a little marginal to me. Everything should have a twist throttle. Now I need a power source. There's one. Here's number two. Now we just need a few wires. The wiring's all set. I found a wrench just the perfect length to jumper the batteries. So uh, this is all ready to go. It is time to turn the ignition key on, twist the throttle, see what happens. Okay, probably shouldn't have the wires in the pedals. Let's try that again. Oh. 
Okay. We'll just tighten this down a little more. That should be fine. All right, let's see what we have now. There we go. Definitely need to make that mount sturdier. Looks like this is all working kind of decent. And the wheels are turning the right way. That's a bonus. New bearings are working pretty good. We're getting somewhere here. I've got some key stock clamped to the sprocket to act as a straight edge. And that way I can get up and check my chain alignment. Where we can weld down there and to the side here. So I think we're good there. Got that one mount tacked into place. And the way the bracket bolts to it, I actually have oval holes here where I can slide this entire motor plate upwards to adjust the chain tension. There's holes here and holes there, also meant to be used for mounting. I'm not gonna use either one. I cut a piece of angle, and I'm gonna have that go right here. And I'm just gonna drill a couple holes in this plate. Once I take this apart to do the final welding and painting, I'll take the milling machine and slot them so the whole motor will be able to slide up and down. Permanent magnet motors have chip stick to them. Go figure. It's like it's a magnet or something. Chain should stay on now. Now there's one more thing I need to do before I start buttoning up all this wiring and stuff. And that is I have to saw the bike in half. These pedals are far too close to the ground. They sit way too low. I found out my feet dragged. All right. Somewhere around there, they got a lot more ground clearance. So the front tire's off the ground right now. Let's just fix that. There, the front tire's touching the ground now. All I have to do is weld that back up and we should be in good shape. I'm gonna steal an idea from the other bike. They put a floorboard here to rest their feet on when you're in electric mode. I'm gonna put a piece of channel, weld to connect these two. That way it'll strengthen up a lot and provide that floorboard. I think I got the frame good enough to try out, so now I need a battery holder. And I found this, which looks just the right size for carrying a couple batteries. There's already a plate and framework here for something, so I can just set this right up top and uh, run a couple bolts straight down, and I'm good. Found a couple of countersunk bolts and some flat washers, so the head of the bolt is below the level of these wires. There. Perfect. Now that washer's wrapped around the wire and nothing sticks up to hit the bottom of the batteries. I've got all my cables run down and I'm going underneath this little plate I added because this looks like a good hiding spot for a lot of things. Ignore the welds. They're bad. I'll fix them later. I have to mount this control box. Looks like I could put it right here underneath there and it'd be protected from the elements and still get cooling air on it. So I want it to go this way on the bottom. Looks like it's supposed to mount on this flange here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it opposite to there and then drill my two mounting holes from up top and then flip it over and mount it from underneath. Yep, my holes line right up. I think this key switch would be fine right here. In theory, dust and dirt will fall into it, but I doubt I'm ever going to take the key out. So uh, I don't think that's a big deal. This key switch uses a one inch hole it also has a little bit of a lump to fit in a notch, so that way it doesn't rotate when you turn it. So uh, I gotta put that notch in place here. There we go. Nice, box next. We got the switch in, we got the box mounted, we got all everything sort of kinda tucked up under. I don't think it'll hit the pedals. Everything should be ready to go, all I need is batteries. Oh yeah, these fit perfect in that basket. Well, time to get the batteries all hooked up. Should be live. Now, turn the key, hit the gas, it moves. Obviously, we gotta take it for a spin next. We're gonna start without pedaling and see what happens. Just broke my welds. My sprocket adapter broke almost immediately. I had it set so the threads would tighten as you apply power, but apparently the force of it turning pulled it sideways and ripped it off. 
and that's what caused it to disengage. So uh, I gotta make that better now. Previously there were two notches, I just tack welded in place. Those welds broke. So I opened up the notches a little bit with uh, the trusty Dremel tool, and then I drilled it, tapped it, modified the bolts a little bit. I've got a much more secure drive adapter. I think those bolts will prevent it from both turning and pulling out. Hopefully. Let's install it and see. There we go. All back together. Take two on trying it out. One legger. It works. The brakes, I should say brake because there's only one on that one front tire. That's terrible. I almost crashed over there. But other than that, it's going great. Luckily, I already bought something to fix that problem. And what I bought is this a disc brake kit. It has a disc, a caliper, and a cable. All I have to do is shove this stuff on there somewhere and it should have better brakes, or at least twice as many. Now I've got the rear wheel here. I saw that it had three holes in it already. This disc has a six bolt circle, which divides nice and evenly. So I figure I could make it fit, even if they're different diameters. Countersunk head bolts are great if you have to have a little bit of misalignment. Also, these spokes stick out, so I'm gonna use some quarter 20 nuts as spacers. And then let's see how close we are. Got one in, got two in, all three are in. Maybe tightening it down will center it up. The brake disc is on and actually running surprisingly straight. The tire wobbles a lot more than the disc does, but the supplied cable's too short. While well, I'm making the brackets for that disc brake caliper, I'm gonna make one for each hole. Here's one of them. Now when I cut this off, I made two angle cuts, so I have a little bit of a uh, V so that'll fit the round tube better. And I'm already started on rounding over this piece. I was about to weld my caliper in, and I realized I should probably show you something. This ad motor bike has this very similar kind of brake with the uh, disc and the mechanical caliper pulled by a cable. This one is a straight pull. It pulls just straight between these two points. This one has an arc on the cable so the force is more even. It's more like it's going around a circle. This has pads in there. Looks like you have to take the whole caliper apart to replace them. On this one, the pads, are, looks like they're held in by a little pin and they can be replaced fairly easily. You can tell by the quality of the casting and the machining, that is a much higher quality unit than the one I'm gonna use. I ran the cable that came with it. Even though it's in the middle of everything, I'm gonna trip over it. I'll get a longer one eventually so I can route it better. But let's see if this brake works. Cruising along, grab a handful of brake. We got brakes. Now I'm gonna stick with these lead acid batteries. They're not nearly as efficient and lightweight as the lithium batteries the Ad Motor bike uses, but uh, I'm doing this for my dad, and he's comfortable with these. When I told him how much battery power that one had, his first question was, is it gonna catch on fire? You can chalk that up to listening to news reports about electric vehicles catching on fire, but when I read the manual for that bike, they're very specific about do not leave it in the sun for too long. It sounds like they're worried about the battery catching on fire. Well, I was concerned about that, and I asked him about it specifically, and this is the answer I got. So I think my dad will be happier with lead acid that he's familiar with, and I have him lying around. Now, my previous clamping system actually fell off at one point, so I'm going ahead and uh, hooking up some better wires. I've hoarded a bunch of wire pieces over the years. I always should tie those down so they don't flop around either. There we go. I'll try this. I might have to upgrade it later, but that's the fun of building something yourself. You can keep changing it as you go. So right now I have two electric trikes lined up that are very similar in their concept as far as the basic layout. So the next step is obviously figure out which one is better. So let the competition begin. So I'm gonna start with the absolute first step in having one of these, the initial cost. I built this bike using scrap parts and the cheapest things I could find 
for around one tenth of what this costs. So this one's an easy one. DIY wins. The next thing is assembly. This one came almost completely assembled in a box. This one I had to spend weeks cutting and welding and scrounging parts to put together. In fact, just the removal of the rusted axle from this bike took me longer than putting that whole bike together. So this is another easy no-brainer one. DIY wins. More building is better. So now, how do they perform? Before I actually get to full speed testing, there's a little bit of prep work to do. The brakes on this one are brand new and the brakes on that one are brand new. Uh, that one has a manual that tells me that I'm supposed to bed the brakes in first before really using them. This one came with no instructions whatsoever, but I'm assuming the same thing applies. So bedding the brakes is the first step. Damn, it can't fell off. I was in the middle of bedding the brakes and I lost my drive. I thought the chain just fell off the sprockets. It actually snapped. This is a chain that was supplied with the kit. It was brand new. and apparently can't handle the power of the motor that it was sent with. While I fix this, why don't you guys watch the bedding in the brake procedure on the pro-built bike. That one seems a lot sturdier. We should be good. I'm gonna take it for a spin now. Why don't you come along? All right, so we start pedaling here. Oh, there the motor's starting to hit. And we're off. Acceleration is surprisingly good. I definitely think I should be wearing a helmet here. Now, as I was bending the brakes, I discovered this bike is fast. Actually, the driving experience is very similar to driving an old three-wheeler. The handling takes a little bit of getting used to, but I spent a lot of hours on ATC, so this felt right at home. Now, with this three-wheel configuration, you spend a lot of time with your inside rear tire off the ground, and this applies to both bikes. The key thing to remember is only one of those rear tires is driven. If it's in the air, it doesn't do anything. Also, you have the added benefit of torque steer on this bike. Kind of like a big wheel. The driving experience uh, just brings me back to my childhood. Luckily, there's good brakes. The one thing I thought about was, I need a helmet. I've never actually owned a bicycle helmet. I actually had to go and buy one specifically just to ride this bike. Also, it gives me somewhere to mount a camera. So you can come along too. Let's go. Pedaling and motors kicked in and away we go. Shifting, 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 shifting. Track 20. Going about the same speed on pure electric. Going from a dead stop, wide open. 14, 15, over 1400 watts. Let's go right out on the road, we're almost going road speed. We can pretty much use this thing as a car. Here we really notice the extra width, but we'll make it. The cars are passing us, but not by a whole lot. Pick the tunnel. Oop, gotta pick this tunnel. Is this the wrong tunnel? I did pick the wrong tunnel. All right, going back. Oh, need my headlights. Headlights are on. Okay, guess this is the right tunnel. Oh, this is pretty cool. Ah, uh, just a hard turn at the end. There we go. The motor just powers me up the hill anyway. 
another two horsepower stop there. Now I've been playing with these power assist settings. So when we're normally pedaling along, I'm in assist setting first. It basically gives you assist up to a predetermined speed. And this one tops out I'm right around eight miles an hour. Now all of a sudden I'm not getting much assist. I'm doing all the pedaling on my own. But if I want to go a little faster, bump to power assist two. Now I'm doing 10. Then if I pedal, I can make it go faster, but it's not really helping me. But if I want to go, say, 12 miles an hour, go to power assist three. And now I'm just cruising along at that speed. Let's go a little faster. Let's go to power assist four. Now we're going 14, 14 and a half. So basically what that power assist setting does is set your cruising speed. Whatever speed you want to go, you just set it for that. And then you pedal along with it and you pretty much stay right about that speed. My daughter outgrew this bike a number of years ago. I don't think it really needs a chain anymore. We're just gonna borrow this one. Man, they really put some serious chain guards on these things. Don't they know kids are supposed to learn how to get their pants out of a bike chain? Got our spare. Here we have another learn from my mistakes moment. If you're doing this, buy master links. The key thing about bending brakes is getting them hot and not coming to a stop until they're fully cured. When your chain breaks, that kind of stops that process. So I'm just gonna assume it's all done and go straight to performance testing. As long as I can drive forward. Let's see if the uh, rusty chain works. Nope, broke that. It actually sheared the link completely apart. Hey, this motor is a lot more torquey than I expected. Luckily, my local Walmart had brand new chain in stock. It was only 10 bucks and comes with a master link. So that makes life easier. There we go. All right, let's see if this works. Yep, rubber marks say it works. In order to get consistent results on our performance test, I borrowed a smartphone from my kids and I put on one of the drag race apps on it. I'll try it with a DIY bike first because that's 250 watts of pure acceleration. And the chain's holding up right now. I want to do this quick before it breaks again for a third time. I'm going to try it without pedaling first and see how that goes. We technically are accelerating. I'm going to try it again, this time with pedaling. Much faster. So let's see how they compare off-road. This does not work in mud. Got a flat tire. There's the culprit. Yep. That's it. Go Ted. These are a real problem around here. In fact, it was one of these that popped that hover around tire that started the video and the reason that the other bike has foam tubes in it. I do not have a spare tube. I always like when you guys comment on stuff because I learn a lot from it. This is a product I never used before. Someone commented that I should try it. So I bought some. Now we're going to try it. That's the only one I have here. It's a tire jet. There we go. Hopefully that does it. I'm here at a state park and uh, there's water and stuff. And ATVs are definitely not allowed here. But I checked at the gate. Bicycles are. So it's totally fine for me to drive these around here wherever I feel like. Let's see how these work.
actually does surprisingly good. Let's try out the other one and see how that works. The one wheel drive is not gonna cut it here. Tires are too narrow. That one doesn't work in this situation. Apparently if you're a lot lighter, like my daughter, it works fine. Just not with my weight. <laughs> you got it though. Good job. Found some really deep sand, so we're going to really put this thing to the test and see what it can do. It's definitely not a full on ATV, but it could do pretty well. I did make it through that stuff, uh, it was hard going but by far better than any bicycle I ever driven. So this thing can be useful. And go. A race. I'm real happy with these things, both of them. I don't know if you could see that tiny little strip of land going to the island. We were out there and we rode them all the way up here, uphill, dirt roads, washboard, no problem, both of them work fine. And even after all the sand work and everything, that one still says the battery's full. So these are going pretty good. They definitely have more range than I'm ever gonna use in one shot. I'm never gonna ride for much longer than this. I'm pretty impressed. I have their own problem with camera gear. I can handle my tie downs. There's a lot of space in that. Now I already weighed the one coming out of the box that wasn't assembled. I wanna see the assembled running weight of both of these. So 127, we'll call it that. 109.5. This is the lighter one and has triple the power. The ad motor bike gets this point. Now I noticed one interesting thing about the startup procedure on this bike. There's a power button. You hold the power button for three seconds or so and that turns on. And then it turns back off immediately. Try holding it for three seconds again. Nothing, it won't go on. But you come back here and check the battery level. The lights go on. They show we have a full battery. They go off. Now it starts up fine. Every time. It may just be this one bike, but uh, it does work every time. Just a little more complicated than I originally expected. Now in contrast, the startup procedure for this bike is pretty consistent. You do that. And that's it. It's done. And now for the ultimate test of how easy to use these are, I had my dad try them out. The results were a lot closer than I expected. The M340 is definitely a better bike, but the DIY one has a lot of merit too. Well that's it for this video. I call it a wild success, because my initial plan was to get my dad some transport that would go about double the speed in a reasonable manner, and I did that. With some cheap parts and leftover stuff I had lying around, I built this thing for very little money. And then, thanks to the people at Motor, we have a real nice one here. It does the same thing, but better. Now the question there is, would I spend my own money to buy this? No. I wouldn't spend that much money to buy a car, never mind a bicycle. But that brings up an interesting point. Thinking of this as a bicycle is kind of a mistake. I've come to realize that this is a loophole. If you live in a city or one of those communities where golf carts are a viable option of transport, this could be a regular thing. You could just drive this for pretty much everything you want to do. But as a bonus, you're not just stuck to roads. You can go on paths where bicycles are allowed. You can go on state parks. You can go a lot of places where they say no motorized vehicles, but you can use this with a motor. And not only are you allowed to use this, people actually smile and wave and think polar bears are smiling at you. 
This has so much political correctness going for it. If you did the same things I did with this bike, with an ATC or something like that, you'd probably be arrested. But here, people smile at you and wave and think you're doing a great thing. So it actually lets you do things that you never thought possible. In fact, that tunnel I drove through with all the paintings, most of my family has never seen that because you can't get to it with any normal vehicle. But this one you can. Something I'd never realized before experiencing this thing, but it's something to think about. And this could be an option for some people. I started off trying to get my dad to go a little faster, and I doubled the speed for cheap. Then I quadrupled the speed thanks to AdMotor, which is scientific proof that I'm now having four times as much fun as I was at the beginning of this video. I hope you guys are having four times as much fun too, and we'll see you next time. It's been three days, tires still holding air, so I'm going to call that fix a win.